What's going on, everybody? I hope everybody had a great weekend. So today, let's talk about Mongols Afro Blue. So this breakdown has been requested like a lot of times and I was trying to take my time with it not because I wasn't familiar with 6-8 feels or anything like that but simply because Mongol played this song so many times and to be quite honest with you played it very differently as time went on. You got to think about it. This song came out and I think it was recorded in 59 with Cal Jada. So the way he played it there is completely different than when he played it like most recently. I think it was 94 or 97 with Tito Puente. Completely crazy, completely different. And as time went on, Mongols flavor and feel also evolved. He had that adobo. He had that sazon. He had that caldo. He even had the obey. I tried to find a common denominator on what he normally did during this song. And again, he in the middle of his grooves, he would do a lot of different styles and different licks and different just like callings, you would say, um, based on that 6-8 feel. But he did have a foundation and I wanted to break it down for you. So it simply starts off with starting on your tumba. Is it just me or do you guys see that happening too? Okay, let me let me see if this one works. I don't know what's going on with that one. What is going? Ah! Sagna, I went to the dark side. The best way I was able to understand this pattern, obviously it's a six eight feel. So I was able to understand that Mongo would always hit the tumba on the two and the five. So one, three, four, six one three four six so that's how i understood it that's how it 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 kind of would always drive and i really enjoyed the way he played it in the original recording in cal jadas as well as the version he played with uh tito puente so to kind of get the bass down this is what he would do So if you notice, I would kind of switch it up here and there because he would do those two types of versions. Uh, it's very, it has a mixture of abacua and bembe into it. So in Mongol style, he would switch it up at times based on how he felt the bass was going. And if you hear the song of the bass, it's dun 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 dun. Like he was going off of that, especially if this is your first encounter with something that's six eight i mean think about it mongo santa maria has a jazz standard that's like crazy but i believe it's a, the first jazz standard that had the six eight um african typical type feel so the way he fusionized everything to make it not just relatable to the common jazz listener but where it's still stuck to its roots so to have a little breakdown on this, it's very hard to to try to uh, to break down Mongo Santa Maria. Trust me, I, I think that's a reason why a lot of people kind of 
stay away from teaching his stuff because very complex, man. Very complex patterns, phrases, feel like it's really hard to try to break down this feel. So uh, I'm doing this with all respect. And if somebody has input, please let me know, man. Afro Blue, that's that song is like sacred, you know, like Sagrado, Sagrado. Straight up. I'm going to first break it down without the little accents and slaps that he adds. So he starts with one hit on the stumba. Then he does two opens with his right. And then an open with his left. Then he goes back to his stumba. So this is the part that kind of gets me like, you know, he would switch it up a lot. He would either do two rapid hits um, on his main drum or he would just do one so or just it, it really depends on how he felt and how he was following the bass at that moment but to kind of put everything together without the slaps this is what he would do crazy right but what makes this pattern a little bit uh i would say more flavorful is the slaps he would put in and sometimes he wouldn't even do slaps he would just leave them as opens but again <laughs> mongol it was all about feel all about feel so this is the best way i was able to try to find to to explain it for you guys so before when he starts that tumba he does a slap with his left hand. So then he does two opens. So to kind of put that together, it's then he does an open with his left hand. And after he does that open with his left hand, he does a slap with that same left hand and goes back to his tumba. After that tumba, he does a slap with his left hand and either decides to do two opens with his right or one open with his right. And then he starts it all over again. But the way he starts it all over is with doing another slap after that open. Now, in his later recordings, he would start to play with three congas, and that's where he kind of does the same exact thing, except those three opens. That last one he does on his left hand, he actually puts it on the third drum. So to kind of see how that sounds, it's... trying to tell you guys man mongol was serious he he was he recorded this in 59 59 man 59 unbelievable so again it's great to know the pattern but where would you put it in that song and after listening to what he would do he would always put it on the two and the five, the tumba at least, which is what's kind of driving that pattern. So to kind of get an idea, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 one, two, four.
So to kind of recap everything, again, this is very, very complex stuff. So it is simple in a way, but when you try to phrase what Mongol did, it's when you start to, you know, you're treading on some waters, you know, so. So to recap, it's one open on your tumba. You're gonna do a left hand slap and then two quick opens on your main drop. And then you do an open with your left hand. And this is the part where you could either put it on your main drum or on the third drum if you want. So to kind of put that together, it's or either one, he did both. But after doing that uh, open, you do a slap with your left hand to go back to your tumba. And then you hit an open on your tumba. And again, this is the part where you either knowing going to do a two opens or one open. But you started with a left hand slap and then you decide, am I going to do a two opens or just one open? And then to go back to everything, you hit one close slap and then start again on your tumba. This one's hard, man. I don't think you guys are gonna like this one, but uh, uh, it's it's hard to explain Mongol. After listening so much to him, uh, he was one of the greatest to ever do it. Not just to play congas, but to 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 do things in six eight. He was the king at that, and I don't. I've never heard anybody, at least to this point, that was unstoppable when it came to playing on six eight or doing feels with six eight. So I hope this benefited somebody. If it didn't, just let me know. <laughs> uh, it's it's a hard one to to kind of break down, but I do suggest everybody to listen to all versions that that Mongo Santa Maria did about Afro Blue. It was his treasure. It was his gem. This guy, that that song is magical, man. But y'all already know what to do. Like, subscribe. See you guys on Thursday. Thanks, Ryan, for the heads, man. Unbelievable, dude. Unbelievable.